So today we're going to celebrate very nicely the appearance of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So, Parikit Maharaj, about the story of many kings, many kings. O king, I told about the story of many kings, powerful kings, so charitable kings. I told in front of you the story of many kings, powerful and charitable kings. For example, the story of Shibi Maharaj. Shibi Maharaj was so charitable. Shumat Bhagavad thanks for this. Shikadeva Goswami Maharaj told the story of Shibi. In the end, hey Maharaj, listen to me. Listen to the Nectarian Katha of Bhagavan. Because today, briefly, I'll speak all this stories very briefly. We'll enter the tenth canto today. So Bhagavan Sri Hari himself appeared from the spiritual world and appeared in this world. Shukadeva Goswami told Anugrahaya Bhakta. God mercifully appears from the spiritual world and manifests his pastimes in this world. If someone hears this kata, remembers this kata, glorifies this kata, or sees this kata, this pastimes, the person will deliver and will directly attain the abode of Lord. So, spoke about two dynasties of God. One is the Chandra Vamsha, Moon Dynasty, and Surya Vamsha, the Sun Dynasty. In the Surya Vamsha, Sun Dynasty, Bhagavan Ramachandra appeared. Bhagavan Ramachandra appeared in the dynasty of the sun. Solas means 16 Karatmika in the Chandra Vamsha, in the dynasty of the moon. Bhagavan Sri Hari appeared. Both characters are amazing. So in this in this dynasties, many great kings came, charitable kings, very powerful kings. All these kings were really, really powerful. Especially in the dynasty of Ikaku, Ikshaku, there was a king called Mandata. Also, the story of Mandata and Sobari Rishi. Time is very short. That's why we cannot. I just do pranam to all these katas and I won't be able to come in, in details but also the story of Sagar Maharaj in the dynasty of Sagar Maharaj Bhagirat came and the story of Vamanadeva and Bali Maharaj yesterday I only, I only indi indicated this story yesterday that boy no, he he wrote me the role of Vamanadeva I liked so much. I thought that really Vamanadeva himself had appeared here. Jai Vamanadeva Bhagavan. Looked like he really came here yesterday. 
Everything depends on the mood. God accepts our mood. So according to our mood, God will accept our mood. Very beautiful. Very nice. So what I want to say is that in that dynasty, Bagirat himself appeared. Bhagirathi manifested Ganga Devi in this world. Then after that, in this dynasty also, Dasharat Maharaj appeared. And the son of Dasharat Maharaj was Bhagavan Ramachandra. In Tirita Juga, Bhagavan Ramachandra performed very street pastimes. The Lila of Bhagavan is very pathetic. There's no one in this world, no one, no Jiva in this world that would not listen to the pastimes of Rama and would not cry. No Jiva is there. Okay, yeah. One person wouldn't cry listening to the pastimes of Rama. Who? That person whose heart is hard because of the offenses. Because Bhagavan's Ramachandra's Kata is so pathetic. So pathetic. I saw directly Gurudev. In 85 or 86, where there was like a presentation of the Ramachandra Lila, Gurudeva used to come and watch this drama. Gurudeva would cry watching. Actually, he saw the, when Gurudeva saw the presentation of the Ramayana in the TV from Ramananda Sagar, the director of Ramananda Sagar Ramayana. So from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., all officers, judges, everybody in India, India would stop. All, even the trials would stop. Judges would also want to see, watch. Even in the high road of Mathura, people would put TV in the TV. Thousand people used to sit around the TV to watch. Everybody used to stop their shops, everything. Everybody wanted to see, to watch the, the TV, the Ramayana in the TV. It was amazing, amazing. And Ramachandra Kata is so pathetic, so everybody wanted to watch. Everyone, 84, 85, that year, when it first came on air, Ramayana, Ramananda Saga. So, in the Bhagavad Sapta, sorry, in the Bhagavad also, Shukadeva Goswami told about this Ramachandra Kata. In you know, the Lamani also we see, Vishwanath Chakravati said, if someone wants to enter Bhagavad Bhakti, certainly the person should honor and get the mercy from Ramachandra. Not imitate him, but get his, like follow his instructions. The bhakti, the devotion that Ramachandra had for his mother, for his father. There's no one who would not cry seeing the customs of Ramachandra. Any of the characters of, Rama, of Ramayana, you can see and you, your heart would melt. So, Fukadeva Goswami in the Bhagavatam, he also told Ramachandra Kata in the Bhagavatam to Parikit Maharaj. Very beautiful Kata. I wanted to describe some Ram Kata. The speciality of Gurudeva I see. Whatever Gurudeva used to speak Hindi Kata, especially in the United States, in Houston, I saw how Gurudeva would be so absorbed glorifying Ram Kata. And Gurudeva used to cry a lot. Gurudeva used to cry continuously. So beautiful is Ram Kata. Really, if you really see, by the mercy of Ram Chandra, you are able to attain Gopi Bhava. There are many evidences. All the Sadhana Siddha Gopis in Braj. All of them, actually, they were born in Braja as Gopis by the mercy of Ram Chandra. They were able to join the Rasalila by the mercy of Ram Chandra. So when time comes, we'll describe this Kata. Especially about the Saradiya Raslila, the autumn season Raslila of Krishna. Our Acharya explain all this. Some devotees say, ah, we are devotees of Krishna. Why, listen, why to listen to Ramachandra Kata? Sometime, one time one person asked this to Gurudev. Gurudev said, look, if you really want to attain Gopi Bhav, the body of a Gopi, you must 
honor and learn to honor Ram. Gurudev told these very sweet words. Shukadeva Goswami Pad himself. In the assembly of Parikit Maharaj, he also told the Katha of Ramchandra. After that, about the lunar dynasty, so many exalted kings appeared. In this context, it's explained the story of Jajati Maharaj. This Katha is also very beautiful with Siddhanta, I'll tell you the Siddhanta. Bhagavan Krishna, he appears in which dynasty? Which dynasty? The Acharyas give the Siddhanta a very beautiful conclusion. There was a great saint called Devamir. Devamir had two wives. One wife in the Vaishya dynasty, another wife in the Chatra dynasty. From the wife of Chatra lineage appeared Surasen. The son of Surasen was Basudev Maharaj. The son of Basudev was Basudev Krishna. So we have to know the identification of the lineage, Vamsa of Krishna. So from the wife of Vaishya dynasty, from her lineage came Parjana, from her womb came Parjana. Parjana had five sons, Upananda and also Nanda Maharaj. And the son of Nanda Maharaj was Krishna. So this is the Vamsa Parichai, means the identification of the Vamsa lineage of Krishna. Because to know one person, first of all, we must know about the family of the person, right? That's why I'm telling this about Krishna. Okay, so continuing the Katha, I want to present you about the story of Jajati Maharaj. He was the son of Nahush. The story is very long. He was not an ordinary person. He was very powerful. Even the wife of Indra. Shochi. Even the wife of Indra to get his association. She was scared by some rishis. And she told the rishis, go quickly, go quickly. And then the rishis cursed her that she would have to become a a snake should have to become a snake the wife of Indra <coughs> so Nahush he gave his kingdom to Dajati one of his sons and then he went to the abode of Lord all this is described so the story of Jajati Maharaj is as follows. So in which dynasty Bhagavan will appear? Okay, God appears in the Jadu Vamsa, dynasty of the Jadus. But the Harikatha, the context of the Harikatha is that one time Jajati Maharaj was going somewhere. Then he went, he saw the he heard a woman crying in the forest, like he, a woman screaming. So, <clears throat> sorry, it was a well. A woman was inside the well. Then he looked and he found one woman naked in the well inside the well. Jajati Maharaj saw her, and his heart melted. So that woman t told Maharaj, "Please save me." Then Jajati Maharaj, what did he do? Somehow he took out his upper cloth and gave to her for her to hold and was able to take her out of the well. Then he also gave her his cloth to her for, so that she would cover her, herself. And that lady told Maharaj, I cannot leave you now. Jajati Maharaj told who are you? 
Tell me who are you? That woman told Maharaj, I am the daughter of Shukracharya, Divjani. Daughter of Shukracharya, Divjani. Naked. How did you fall in this well? Another point, you also tell me. So don't leave my hand. Means you have to, she told, you have to get married to me. Then Jirati Maharaj said, I am Kshatriya, you are Brahmani. I cannot get married with you. If your father knows about what happened, I will become ashes. Then Devjani told, O king, actually was already predetermined that I would get married to a Kshatriya. It's not your fault. And my actually Janma Marita Vibaha birth, death and marriage, wedding is actually only in the hands of God. In, it's not in our hands. In the Mahabharata we see there is a shloka saying where are you going to take birth? Where are you going to die? And we are wedding or marriage. Your astrologer can say so many things, but actually, not even the astrologer can. This is only in the hands of Bhagavan. Nobody can stop the desire of God. So, we're hearing this Jajati Maharaj story. Tell me. Why did you fall naked in a well? What is the reason? <coughs> Devajani told, Oh Maharaj, listen. My father, Shukracharya, name of my father, Vishwapada. No, oh, sorry. Devajani said, My father is Shukracharya and the daughter of, the, of Vishwaparva, Sarmista. We were very friends because my father used to come to the kingdom of Vishwaparva, the king. So I was really friends with the daughter of Vishwaparva, Sarmista. Daughter of Vishwaparva named Sarmista. And Devajani, daughter of Shukracharya, said, I was really friends with her. But before you came, she told Jajati Maharaj, before you came some time ago, me and Sarmista, both of us, we were in a beautiful lake, playing in the water, naked. We were playing in the water naked. We were intoxicated with our youthfulness, youthfulness and beauty. What to do? We were intoxicated with your, by your, our youth. And we were in that beautiful lake playing. And then in that moment, Shiva and Parvati, they started coming. Since Shiva and Parvati, we became afraid. Then quickly, both of us came out of the water. And we covered our bodies because we were feeling ashamed. But by mistake, I took the clothes of the princess Sharmista, the daughter of the king. And by the influence of time, what happened sometimes? We were friends. We were friends before. So the friends, they wear the clothes of another friend. No problem. So we did, I didn't even think about it. I just quickly took the clothes. But I, I, wore, the, I wore the clothes of Sharmista instead, not my own. Sa Sarmishta. Sarmishta saw I was wearing her clothes and she became so angry and she called me names she swore me your dog you're just like a dog going here and there 
in the kingdom, the courtyards of the king, eating like a dog. So you're also like a dog, she told me. Even she swore me, like he called me names, taking the name of my father. Aren't you ashamed? I'm the princess? I, you're wearing my uh, expensive clothes? You are a beggar? Your father is a beggar? Beggar? Beggar. The daughter of a beggar is also a beggar. And you, using my expensive royal clothes? How dare you? So she was like swearing me. Devjani told Jajat. So Devjani didn't, uh, couldn't put up with that situation and said, You're foolish. Don't you know? By the mercy of my father, means the Guru, Shukracharya, is that your father has a good position. But this is true, yes. A crow can become Garuda. You know the crow? A crow can become Garuda. Anything is possible by the desire of God. Even the impossible becomes possible. So Dev Jani started also to call names Sarmishta. Foolish. Why are you saying? By the mercy of my father is that your father got the position of a king. If my father wants desires. Your father can also become a beggar. So the two friends, by the influence of time, you see what happened with, with their friendship. So you become, today you are the friends of someone, tomorrow that person becomes your enemy. And that person who was your friend yesterday, today is your friend. This is really interesting in this world, isn't it? You can see this in your own life, you can see this. If you do something with faith, Ah. You cry so much in your life because you have trust someone and then later that person changed like uh, uh, in relation to you. We'll uh, tell many times but no one wants to hear. Even that person who is, has pure character. Time is very powerful. Even a person has no character, sometimes can be blamed for something because the time is making these things. So, so first they were like the two girls didn't have anything to do. First they were just farming. Then later they even started fighting like really like fighting like physical fight but Sarmishta was like royal she was a princess she was like fat and chubby and strong so Devjani was wearing the clothes of Sarmishta Sarmishta pulled pulled away the clothes and make her naked and also put her in the well Devjani told O oh king I became helpless what to do but you took me out of the well left me out so Jajati Maharaj told if I'll marry you how will I be able to marry you how can I marry you then Devajani again told her life history Maharaj you are a Kshatriya I am a Brahmani I am the daughter of a Brahman actually was already pre-established that I had the son of Brihaspati Koch he had cursed me that I would get married to I wouldn't get married to the son of a Brahmana Shasta explains you should get married to the person in the same Varna as you this is proper a Brahmana should marry a Brahmana a Chatra should marry a Chatra these are the rules of the scriptures a chatra should not marry a brahmana. This is something bad, it's faulty. It's a shloka, there's a shloka in the Bhagavatam. Because the brahmana is worshipable to us. He's higher for us. So if the kshatra marries a brahmana, 
so there's a problem. There will be a problem. It's not possible. Even Gurudev also told me, I tell, because I cannot hide Gurudev Kata. Gurudev told, Indians should marry Indians, Westerners should marry Westerners. Good, this is the words of Gurudev. You can hear Gurudev's lecture. Some Westerners say, Oh, I want to make, marry an Indian boy. Or some Indian boy say, I want to marry a Western girl, or vice versa. So I have to tell what Gurudev said, otherwise you will suffer. Gurudev himself told. There's one spiritual conception and material conception. It's not the same. In the spiritual conception, there's no difference between Indians and Westerners. This is true because we're speaking about the soul. I'm not saying he's English, she's, he's Westerner, this and that. But when you consider about the material conception, we must see these worldly things. Di they have different culture, different samskara, different culture. For 25 years, I'm I'm traveling Western countries. I didn't see one Westerner that was able to marry an Indian person and stay until the death together. I see, I see. Because it's not possible. It's not possible. Because, but in India, this is possible. Even though, in the influence by the influence of Western countries, in India also there's the divorce nowadays. But still, if you want to see. The Indians, they have this of like lasting marriage. Gurudev told, this is the words of Gurudev. You can get married and see by yourself. Those who have taken the laddu of Delhi, they have regretted. And those who haven't taken also regretted. Because it's not so easy to adhere to a new culture. Okay, spiritual life, okay. Spiritual life, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying or not? I want to say this. I want to tell this. Because if I don't speak the Gurudev's Kata, what will I speak about? I didn't come to speak about anything else. I came to speak to present the Kata of Gurudev. That's why I'm sitting in the Biasasan. Gurudev told, you should marry people from your own. Gita also says. This is true, I saw. They are crying. You see a beautiful, a beautiful western girl she's so beautiful or maybe she's rich then you cry you cry she'll take her kids with her and they'll be crying you'll be here you have to send money to her and if you go to western countries the government will catch you and you have to pay for her maybe 300 dollars or more for a month per month in india you can beg or do anything but you got married had babies We'll have fun. But you have to pay like pension, like three hundred dollars you can ask them. You have to pay otherwise you'll go to the jail. And even in the jail they'll make you work by force. So I I tell you be careful. Otherwise you'll regret. This is true. See it carefully, brother. Because they come to me. I have many disciples. Oh Maharaj, this happened to me. I'm like I told I tell them, you check. First of all, I'm against marriage. Okay, I'm not against. Not against, okay. I don't prohibit. Okay, get married. But you suffer yourself. Those come to me, I'm like, okay, listen to Harikata. But if you want to get married in this grace of life, go to others. Those who come for me is to listen to Harikata. 24 hours, I'm only speaking Harikata. I'm ready to speak Harikata 24 7. This is true or not? You can see. I'm ready to speak Harikata. I don't want to discuss about ma marriage and disgraces in life, or also about politics, what happened this and that, in this temple, that temple. I don't speak about material things. If somebody asks something, I speak Gurudev's Kata. Whatever I heard from Gurudev, I will tell you. Do what Gurudeva it told. So my kata now is going everywhere in the earth. Everybody's listening, quiet, but they're listening. The whole earth, they're listening what I'm saying nowadays. So anyway, coming back to the Harikata, time is up. <laughs> so 8.30, you have to finish. <laughs> so Devjani is saying, 
O king. Although you're a kshatriya, I have to get married to you. You have to get married to me. Actually, my father already consented. He agreed already. I'll tell you the story of this. So in this way, Devjani told. Oh, king, listen to me. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, king, listen. Estão traduzindo em português? Aribou? Português está rolando? So, sometimes there are a lot of a fight between demigods and demons. Sometimes demons lose, sometimes demigods lose. Sometimes demons take swarga over swarga and demigods have to run away. And the demons, what do they do? Sukracharya had a mantra called Samjivani Mantra, the mantra of the resurrection. With this mantra, even a person who is dying can come back to life. Even if you get a little bit of the bones of the person, of the flesh, you can resurrect that person from that piece of the flesh of the person. So that's why the demons became very powerful because Sukracharya had this resurrection mantra, Samjivani Mantra. The son of Bihaspati, Koch, he thought, so the son of Bihaspati, Koch. Remember, what is his name? Koch. Koch. Demigods told Koch, go and somehow you take from Shukracharya this Sanjivani Mantra, Resurrection Mantra, bring it to us. Koch came. Koch came, just like a student, a small boy, and said, told Sukracharya, Gurudev, I want to study something in your ashram. Sukracharya said, okay. Sukracharya understood he was actually a son of demigods. But still, the scriptures say, when somebody comes to learn anything from you, that person can belong to any case. You should not um, say no. You should always teach whatever the person like if the person comes for knowledge, you should give teaching, teachings. So Koch started to study in the school of Shukracharya. But the daughter of Shukracharya, Dev Jani, she came to the school of her father. And she saw the son of the demigods, Koch. And he was really pretty. He was really handsome. Yes, this is true. Seeing him, Dev Jani, she completely got, like, she, like fell in love, like, say, like this. Like, slowly, slowly. Love at first sight. So slowly, slowly, she started to love Koch more and more. Koch thought what to do. Okay. I have to take the Samjivani mantra that I came to take. The resurrection mantra. Koch to Devajani. Devajani, I can marry with you, but there's one condition. If your father gives me the Sanjivani Mantra, then I'll marry you, otherwise not. Devjani thought, Oh father, give the Sanjivani Mantra to him. Then Sukarchara said no. Then the Asur boys, the other demon boys, they saw all. Devjani and Koch, they. Devjani, she felt she's been so much love and affection, having so much love and affection for Koch. Why? So one day the, the, the demon, demon bodies, demon, sorry, demon boys, demon boys, they uh, killed Koch and gave him to, for the dog to eat, his flesh to the dog. Devajani saw Koch was not there anymore. She became crazy for him. Father, where is my Koch? Where is my Koch? 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 Devajani was searching for him. Then she got to know that the other demon boys had killed him and they had fed the dog the flesh of Koch. So, but she got the blood of Koch and with the mantra, Shukrachara was able to resurrect Koch from the belly of the dog and the Koch came back to life. So Koch came back to life. Then the demon boy thought, how possible Koch came back to life? Ah, from the mantra of Gurudeva. 
So the Zimon boys, if there's no bamboo, there will be no flute. Let's let's cut in pieces and like make. Let's make a let's make a chutney of koch, like grating or grinding and like in pieces pieces. Let's make a juice of koch flesh, and you know, let's make Shukrachara drink koch's juice of his flesh and blood. So now Koch is in the belly of Shukracharya. Devajani was searching, Father, where is my Koch? Somehow she got to know that Koch now was in the belly of her father. What to do now? Now Shukracharya wouldn't allow, right, to chant the mantra. How possible? Then Devajani told Father, I cannot remain alive without my coach. Somehow you make coach come back to life, please. Shukrachara said, look. Okay, if I chant the mantra, coach will come to life and I will die. Then Devajani told my father, look, you give me the mantra. Okay. When coach comes out from your belly and you'll die, I will chant the mantra and I will resurrect you. Shukrachara said, okay. Then Shukar Charja gave the mantra to Dev Jani. So she chanted the mantra and then Koch came out of the belly of Shukar Charja. Koch came back to life. Then Dev Jani with mantra, she also made her father Shukar Charja come back to life. So now who has the mantra? Dev Jani. And Koch told I can marry with you if you give me the mantra. The mantra you got from your father. Then Devjani, she gave the mantra to Koch. Koch got the mantra and said, I will not get married to you. You are a demoness and I'm demigod. Do you think I'll marry to you? Of course not. Those who know astrology know there is something called Gan. Devgan, Osurgan, kinds of people. There are many kinds of people here who also can check uh, synastry between people. So they first they analyze what is your gun, Devgan or Asurgan? Like the person is human being, Manushgan. I have to see. First they see. If you are Devgan, demigod gun. If you marry a demon gun. You can never find happiness in your life. Always fight. Because demigod and demon cannot mix. So those who check the synastry, the astrology chart, astrological chart for the m matching of uh, husband and wife before marriage, first they analyze the gun. You know everything. I'm not discuss. So many people know about this here. I just learned a little bit about this, then I stopped learning. So... Anyway, they analyze many things, not only the gun, but one of the aspects they analyze is the gun. Like uh, Asur gun, Manusha gun, Devata gun. So Koch told Devjani, I'll not get married to you. I'm a demigod, you are a demon. Our culture is completely different. I told before, like I told Gurudev Singh, I told. In spirituality, okay, Indians and Westerners may be one. Spiritual life is one thing, material things another one. You cannot mix both. Can you mix? No. Coach Dowd. I cannot get married to you. The vagina was whether a man or a female. If you are a male, male or female, if you're like in love with someone, it's really hard to come out of that love. But you see how it is. First is I love you, then I hate you, then I like kill you, etc. Actually, there's no love in this world. I'm saying actually there's no love. There's lab. You know, in the lab laboratory. 
you do tests in a lab. You have to do tests in the lab. There's no love, there's lab. Useless. So you have to get married, you have to see first properly. See the astrological chart to see if match or not. Otherwise, after some time, finish the marriage. Finish. Foi. So, okay, continue. So, Koch left. But Devjani, she became angry and cursed him. Foolish. I gave up everything for you. Even you went to the belly of the dog. I took you out from the belly of the dog. Then you came to the belly of my father. I also took you out from the belly of my father. And you cheat me like this and you're going away? You cheat me like this? Actually, you pretend to love me just to get what you wanted. Now you're going. I curse you. So she cursed him. This mantra actually will not work for you. The mantra will not work for you. So Devajani cursed Koch. Koch Sada, yeah. Koch also cursed back Devajani. Foolish girl, foolish lady. Murkani, like foolish lady. You also for your own interest. So, yeah, I also curse you. Although you are a Brahmani, you get married to a Kshatriya, not in the Brahmana family. So, this Kata Devjani told to told Jajati Maharaj. Okay, coming back to the Kata. So, Jajati Maharaj got married to Devjani as a Gandharva way. So then, she told to Shukrachar everything had happened. She told Shukrachar everything had hap that had happened. So Shukrachar was very angry with Sarmishta, the daughter of Vishwaparva. Shukrachar entered the court of the king Vishwaparva and he was like screaming, yelling, your daughter tried to kill my daughter in this way. Vishwaparva pacified. Pacified. Shukrachar, they are young girls. Please, I don't have any faults. Hey, Gurudev, please forgive us. But Shukrachar was really angry. Then Vishwaparva took hold of the feet of um, Shukrachar and said, Gurudev, please forgive me. Then slowly, slowly, the anger of Shukrachar was uh, pacified. Then he said, okay, whatever my daughter Devjani says, you have to follow. Bishop Ava said, okay, Gurudev, let's do whatever she says. Then Devjani told, okay, Sarmishta must be a dasi in my house, a servant, a maid in my house. And she should never meet my husband. So two conditions. She was the daughter. Sarmista was the princess. But now she's the maid in the house of Divjani. She was sweeping the house of Divjani like a servant. So in this context of Harikata, Bhagavatam tells this kata and also Yeah, Bhagavatam Dev Goswami. So Devajani, Jajati Maharaj had some kids with Devjani. Two sons. Jodu. Konsana? Jodu, eh? Anyway, two sons. Jodu and Todu. And the, or another name. So, first of all, Sarmishta was a princess, but she was working as a maid. So she was a princess, but she was really pretty, you know. She was really beautiful and very young and beautiful. So seeing her, Jajati Maharaj was also overtaken by lust. So he had an affair, hidden affair with her. And he had three sons with her. Druja, Anu and Puru. Three sons. But Devajani didn't know her husband had an affair with the maid Sarmishta. One day, the sons, three sons of Dharmishta 
Sarmishta came. So Sarmishta would come to work in the house of Devjani. Her sons also came along. Devjani saw her kids. What? These kids look like my husband Jajati, the same face. So she like became like she like, suspicious. How did you get these sons? Sarmishta told everything. Look, your husband Jajati Maharaj. He he loves me secretly. He has an affair with me, and I had three sons from him. Hearing this, Devjani became really angry. Then Devjani again. Again, she came to her father. Shukracharya. She came to Shukracharya. Complain. Shukracharya again became angry and cursed Jajati Maharaj. Foolish king! You are having an affair with a maid? Go. All your potency will be over. You'll become old. All your potency will be destroyed. You'll become old and weak. Saying this immediately, the body of Jajati Maharaj became weak and old. His skin became wrinkles, full of wrinkles. He was like about to die. Seeing this, Devajani also thought, at least I have a husband, but it's very bad. He's, he's like a husband at least, but I don't want to be a widow. Like to be a widow is worse than having this husband. So Devajani told her father, Father, please forgive my husband. Then Shukrachara said, Okay, go. If, if one of the sons of Jajati Maharaj take his old age and give in exchange their, his youth to him, then Jajati can be young again. Saying this, Jajati Maharaj, he approached his first son, Jodu, and told Jodu, you take my youth, youth. No, take my old age and give me your youth, youth. Jodu told, from birth, actually, whatever I have, my young and young age and everything, I have given everything to God. Oh, my father, I cannot take your old age. So he rejected his father. Then Jajati Maharaj came to Puru. Told Puru, my son, give me your young age and take my old age. Then Puru, Puru took the old age of his father and gave his young age to him. So Jajati Maharaj was really young again and for a thousand years more he was with his wife Devjani loving relationship with his wife for a thousand years. Then one day Devjani told him hey Maharaj Jajati have you chanted your Anik? Have you chanted your Gayatri Mantra? At that time, Jajati Maharaj told, Oh, for how many years I have stopped, I didn't chant my Mantra. I've been many years without chanting. Because those who are in material things, they forget the Mantra, to chant the Mantra. So Shastra explains, the Guru, the Mantra Guru gave you, the Gayatri Mantra, you should never stop chanting. This is an offense to the Guru if you don't listen carefully. Never, ever, in any stage, you should not give up the Guru Mantra. And you should never stop chanting the mantra that the Guru gave you. Jajati Maharaj told, Hey Dev Johnny, now it's late. Uh, now it's uh, like already evening. I forgot to chant the mantra for long, how much long time? Oh my. And then. Devjani said, Oh my husband, chant, continue chant, like start again, start over the Gayatri Mantra. Now, time of death came, and if you don't chant the Gayatri Mantra, you will go to hell. Hearing this, Jajati Maharaj told a story to Devjani. It's also a very interesting story, it's in the Bhagavatam. He told, Hey, listen, Devjani. There was a female goat. She fell in a well. 
and a he goat, he goat, male goat, with his like with his um, like somehow he took the she goat out of the well with his horn. Anyway, then they for many days they were together enjoying sense gratification. The he goat and she goat. Slowly, slowly, for some reason, he lost all his potency, his shakti. The he goat. He was about to die. Saying this, Jajati Maharaj, he told, Hey Devjani, my life history is also like this. The jivas are suffering in this material world, so absorbed in sense gratification. They forget the spiritual things. You came to do Hari Bhajan, and you are only wasting time. You have come to this world for what? To do Hari Bhajan. We came just to do bhajan, but actually we are only wasting time of material things. Jajati Maharaj told his life history. Then the Vajani she also meditated. In the end they went to Bhagavad. Bhagavad Lok? Lok? They went to the abode of Lord. So why God appeared in this Jodhu dynasty? Because Jodhu was completely surrendered to God. Parikit Maharaj, he also asked this to Shukadeva. Sorry. Gurudeva, why did Bhagavan appear in the Jodhu Vamsa? Dynasty of Jodhus. There especially this dynasty of Jodhus, Yodhu, why God appeared in this dynasty? Why? Because Yodhu, he was a surrendered soul to God. He was surrendered. So, the relationship we have with our parents is only relationship with the body, this body. Like that mother and father that you call in this birth. If When you change this body, then this relation will also change. In every birth we get parents. Every birth we get mother and father. If, even when we are born as dogs or cats, but so you are born as human beings, also you get parents. But Guru and Krishna cannot meet in every birth. No. So he's my real mother, he's my real father, he's my real friend, he's my real brother. So who is our real mother and father? Guru Pad Padma. Bhagavan, he's a real mother and father. So I want to finish this kata. So I am Bhagavan Sri Hari, performing pastimes like a human being. He, how he came in this world, performing pastimes like a human being. So I told you about the dynasty of Lord. There was a person called Devamir. Devamir had two wives. One from the Chatriya dynasty, another in the Vaisha dynasty. The wife in the Chatra dynasty gave uh, uh, in her lineage came Surasen. Surasen's son was Bosudev Maharaj. Bosudev Maharaj's son was Krishna. From the wife that was Vaisha came Parjana. From Parjana came Upananda and Dara. Five sons, Nanda Maharaj in between. Then the son of Nanda Maharaj was Krishna. So in this contest of Harikata, very beautiful. So at that time, Maturapuri was known as Surasena Pradesh. Mathura was known as Surasena Pradesh. The king of Mathura Pradesh was Ugrasen. Ugrasen was really powerful at that time. So Ugrasen got married with a beautiful wife. Her name was Padmabhati. But after they got married, when she became like, like in her period, one day she was so like intoxicated in one garden, then like she was not in period, she was in the fertile period, fertile. So uh, this demon was coming in the sky and he became intoxicated by her. So like he became attracted to her. So he came in disguise of her husband, like Ugrasen, and he did the uh, loving pastimes with her. 
not loving past time, sorry, loving dealings with her, and he impregnated her with the son Kamsa. So actually, Kamsa is the son of a demon. Kamsa is not biological son of Ugrasen. No, he is not the biological son of Ugrasen. Kamsa was evil, and he was actually born from the semen of a demon. That's why Kamsa was really evil and bad person also. So Vasudev Maharaj, so he got married to Devaki. So Kamsa had so much love for his sister, taking care of his sister. So when Devaki got married to Vasudev, after the wedding, Kamsa himself, he was riding the chariot in his golden chariot. He put his dear sister and he himself was riding the chariot for his sister. And the groom, they are sitting here, you see? The groom and the bride and the groom, they were in the chariot also. After some time, an area of voice came. Foolish Kamsa! This Devaki and Vasudev that you are caring so nicely and you got them married, like you, you helped the marriage and everything, they're ready. This your dear sister, her eighth womb, her eighth womb will be Bhagavan Vishnu who will appear. He will kill you. He will kill you. Listening to this, Kamsa, hearing this, Kamsa fell, uh, jumped from the chariot jumped off the chariot and then he took his very sharp sword where there is no bamboo there will be no flute I will make this area of voice a lie like I'll prove it it's a lie so saying this comes so he got hold of her hair and like dragging her down and he was about to cut off her neck then Bosudev Maharaj in this moment he, he told Hey king, it's not proper to kill a woman. You are so powerful and you know, like a great uh, great uh, warrior. If you kill a woman, all the other heroes they will, they will make fun of you and say, "Come, sir, you are so strong and powerful." No, you killed a woman who was your own sister. Come on, just explain. You should never kill a boy. You should not, not what speak of kill. You should never even raise your hand to an old man, to a woman, and to a kid. Never, ever. You should raise a hand to a woman. Uh, you'll go to hell. You can be even the son of this woman or the husband of this woman. You should never raise your hand to a woman, even if the woman is doing bad things. Shasta explains. Still, you should never raise your hand to a woman. So with beautiful logic, Vasudev Maharaj told, Hey Maharaj, come so. Don't say this. I'll give you my word. I give my word to you. This aerial voice that came told about the eighth, eighth son of Devaki that would kill you. Or be Vishnu that would kill you. But I give you my word. I'll give all the sons to you. Then you can kill these babies. Then Kamsa said, this is true. What Basudev Maharaj is saying is true. Basudev Maharaj never lies. He's always truthful. So, okay. So, but he did not spare them. Like he brought them back in the chariot. Kamsa brought them back to the palace. And he made them like, he arrested them inside the inside the palace they were like uh, arrested inside the palace they had limitation they could not go anywhere freely Narada Rishi also has another job I told Narada it's nothing less Narada always helps in the Leela so Narada came there 
जय हो जय हो नारायण नारायण Everything's okay. Narada said. Everybody calls Narada as Guruji. Friends, enemies, everyone calls Narada as Guruji, Guruji. Even comes himself also Guruji, Guruji. Come, come, very nice. Sit down. So he sat down. So he honored him, gave him water to drink, everything. Narada said, "Comes, everything's okay." Oh, Guru Deva, what can I say, Guru Deva? What can I say? Just now there was an aerial voice saying about the eight womb of Deva kill Vishnu that will kill me. Narada said, "Comes it's so easy answer to this. What should I do? Okay, look." You can kill all the sons. How possible? No, only the eight son. The eight son will kill me. This will be Vishnu who will kill me. Narada told, "Look, Vishnu is very big cheater. You think you are simple like this, but Vishnu is not so simple like this. So easy. Okay, what is the first day in the week? Sunday comes first or Monday comes first? You tell me." Put eight ladoos, eight sweets in the circle. Which one is the first? If you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you can start counting from one or from the other one. How to know which one is the first? Oh yeah, Guru Deva. Guru Deva, you have opened my eyes, really. Guru Deva, you have opened my eyes, Guru Deva. Okay, so do one thing. Kill all the sons, but there is no bamboo, there will be no flute. Vishnu is a big cheater because maybe the third womb will be the eighth womb. You don't know. So, okay, do one thing. Kill all the sons. Okay, Ah Guru Dev, this is true. Guru Dev, yes. Then Dev came to Dev. They were in this. They put Dev came to Dev in this dun dungeon. The tower is long. Anyway, one by one. That the son that Devaki had, comes to kill them all. This is called Sargar, but the six womb, wombs of David. So he killed six wombs. Yes, tomorrow we'll tell the meaning of the Sargar. So the eight, the seventh womb, when Devaki got pregnant, the seventh womb actually who was came who came in the seventh womb. So I am Bhagavan. Before Bhagavan coming, Baladev Prabhu came. But Jogamaya arranged that attracted pulled from the womb of Devaki and put Baladev in the womb of Rohini. But people got to know that actually Devaki had had a miscarriage. Okay, so in the eighth womb, so I am Bhagavan appears in the eighth womb. When Devaki was pregnant in the, from the eighth womb, comes a saw her and he would be afraid seeing her. Whenever Kamsa would come to the prison, he would see her. He would see her shining, her luster, bodily luster. He he would he saw Vishnu appearing just like the time coming to him to kill him. This way. Seven months passed. In the eighth womb, sorry, seven months passed. In the eighth month, eighth month, Demigod also came and performed many stavastutis prayers to the womb of Devaki. If Swami Bhagavan was about to come in the eighth month, eighth month of pregnancy. So, when Devaki was about to have the baby, to appear in the baby, then. Jogamaya arranged the nature to be so beautiful, so beautiful, so dressed up, like ornamented. Because if God is appearing, the nature is also. So the nature is also. 
dress up. The cuckoo, cuckoo birds singing. Peacock, peahen, dancing and singing. Everyone's feeling so much bliss in their heart. It was the month of Bhadra. Month of Bhadra. Rohini Nakshatra. Rohini constellation. So, beautiful environment in the nature. Kamsa had ordered all the security guards. They should maintain position. As soon as the son of Devaki is born, I should be informed. Then, midnight, in the mi midnight, at midnight, by the desire of Bhagavan, so many clouds came in the sky. Storm, lightning, thunders, thunderstorm. All the security guards, they fell asleep. Then in the jail of Kamsa, the Supreme Lord, Bhagavan Sri Hori, he appeared from the womb of Devaki. How? With Shankar Chakra Gada Padma, four arms. So he told Devaki and Vasudev, Devaki and Vasudev, see my beautiful form. In Satya Yuga, you have also attained to me in the form of Prishni Garba. At that time you were Prishni Sutapa and you have worshipped Narayana. You had asked for the benediction to have me as a son. I gave the blessing to you at that time that for three births I would be your son. As Prishni Garba in Satya Yuga, as Kashap. Aditi, son, I appeared to you as Vamanadev. Now it's my third birth. Hey Devaki Vasudev, see my, my form, see my form. My name, I'll be known as Basudev for being the son of Basudev. My name is Basudev. See my beautiful form. So God showed his Shankar Chakra God Padma, his forearms and his, gave darshan to them. Then Vaki Vasudev folded hands, they prayed to God. They, we are afraid that Kamsa will come and kill you. Hey Prabhu, please again manifest in the form of, of like a baby, as like a baby. Saying this, Swami Bhagavan told. Hey Basudev, do one thing. Very quickly, you should take me out of the prison, the jail, across the Jamuna. Take me to Nandalai and bring her, her son, her, her offspring, and take me there. Saying this, Swami Bhagavan, Narayana, again he manifests the form of a baby. Then Devaki, only once she breastfed Krishna in the prison. Then Basudev Maharaj took the boy. Then all the prison's um, doors opened. Then he came out and he saw it was raining so much, so much. How will I take this baby? So thinking this, Anantadev Bhagavan Baladev came in the form of a snake as like, like, a, like, like an umbrella to protect Krishna. So at that time Jamuna was 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 uh, like flooded because of the rain. How to cross Jamuna? So Jogamaya manifests in the form of a chekhov to show him the way. Then he was able to cross the Jamuna. Then Vasudev Maharaj came to Nandalai. Nandalai? Where the, the wife of Nanda Maharaj, Namadha Shodashi, had given birth to two babies. Bhagavata explains. Anuja. Anuja. 
Anudia Anud Anud means Anudia means somebody who is born after the after a boy like sister so Vasudev Maharaj saw that girl baby girl he took that girl and put his baby there he took the girl and then came back he took the girl and came back there are many secrets behind this tomorrow we will discuss in details then so when the girl was crying back in the prison Kamsa Kamsa was informed Maharaj Devaki's son was born Kamsa came very quickly and he saw the baby girl and Kamsa forcefully he took the baby girl from out of Devaki's hands and tried to kill her but the girl she kicked in the head of Kamsa Kamsa fell and then she appeared in the sky with eight arms in the sky and said foolish Kamsa you think you can kill me your killer your murderer the one who will kill you already has has <laughs> the person who will kill you has already taken birth and he's elsewhere so Kamsa was so disturbed hearing this and he was thinking where is Vishnu where is Vishnu So he called in the middle of the night one emergency meeting. So he called Utana and great demons also to come. Tomorrow we'll verify this. But in Andalai, Maja Shoda, she was she gave birth to Gopal. Tomorrow we'll speak this. Go to the Panamadurian for seeing the play. There will be a beautiful presentation.